we will start the recording of the session so that we make sure that it is made available to all the participants of the hybrid uh, university that are not uh, online right now. Uh, so welcome everyone from uh, Athens, Greece. Uh, my name is Iro, Iro Alampei, and I am uh, here with my colleague uh, Vicky Malotidi and Olga, uh, who are facilitating uh, this uh, session. Um, I would like to start by asking you, I see some familiar faces and some familiar names, but maybe as I um, present you some housekeeping um, notes, uh, you can write in the chat where you are uh, uh, connecting from so that we have a broad idea um, about the geography dispersion of uh, this meeting. And uh, I will share my screen. Hopefully you can see it. Okay, so this is the first um, uh, Meet the Expert uh, session of the Hybrid University. Uh, as you all know, we will have such sessions uh, every Friday afternoon to recap the content of the previous week and uh, have the opportunity to talk with the experts um, on the um, issues and the concepts uh, dealt with. Um, Uh, the meeting structure for the next one and a half hour, uh, we will start with this uh, housekeeping notes and rules, uh, then we will invite uh, the experts of the week, uh, that is Professor Skoulos, who is the Mediterranean Information Office Chairman and Scientific Coordinator behind, behind all uh, hybrid or summer universities, um, Mr. Jonathan Baker from the UNESCO uh, Venice Office, who has been uh, a key player behind the organization of these meetings and uh, summer universities, and Dr. Thanos Dailianis uh, from ECRIT, um, who also contributed the presentation of the, for this week. Uh, then uh, we will uh, move on to the questions that you posed in the slide or other questions that you can make now in the chat based on the uh, week one content. And we will uh, finish with some closing and announcements for the second week. So um, we invite you to keep the camera on. It's always better to see uh, each other when we uh, discuss. Uh, I explained to you why this session is uh, being recorded and will be then uh, uploaded um, in the content uh, tree of the uh, e-course. Uh, have your microphone off and uh, leave your chat box uh, open because this will be the main uh, interactivity tool um, throughout the uh, session. Uh, we would like to invite you also to switch off any um, destructive uh, applications uh, such as uh, mobile social media applications and so on. Uh, but you are uh, welcome, of course, to have your coffee or tea and the notebook uh, so that you can uh, keep notes. Um, let's um, see, as this is our first uh, meeting, uh, let's um, uh, remind ourselves of the whole uh, framework behind this uh, uh, summer university or hybrid university. Um, so this is uh, the part B, as we say, it is the online um, part of um, a, a whole uh, hybrid university. The first part took place uh, earlier in uh, 2022 in um, Crete, in uh, Asterusia Biosphere Reserve, a new biosphere reserve, as well as in uh, Cyprus. Uh, in combination with the ninth um, Environment for Europe um, conference. Um, so there in phase A, we, uh, for a number of uh, selected participants, uh, which is of course, as you can understand, smaller, uh, we had the opportunity to discuss about um, uh, ocean literacy and how it can be um, applied or developed in a biosphere reserve. Uh, and uh, now in this uh, second part for the next uh, four weeks, we will have the opportunity to interact with more people from uh, all around the world. 
and uh, in the next uh, in this first week and the next uh, three weeks uh, we will uh, start uh, diving deeper in um, uh, concepts around the uh, ocean literacy so this first week we talk about the wide picture uh, about why ocean is important and relevant to all of us uh, in the next week, we will talk about the challenges and the risks that the ocean uh, faces. Uh, in the third week, we will uh, discuss about uh, how to overcome these challenges and the way forward. And the fourth week is uh, devoted to action and education for the ocean. Uh, specifically for week one, for those of you that still haven't had the chance to, to log in and in the platform, um, we uh, introduce these wider frameworks, wider agendas behind this and all, also all previous summer universities or hybrid universities. So these wider frameworks concern the sustainable development goals, uh, the MAN and the Biosphere program of uh, UNESCO, and uh, of course the UNDK for the ocean um, that started uh, last year or actually two years ago. It's uh, already uh, two years old this decade. Um, we discussed about the uh, ocean uh, characteristics, why it is uh, its vital importance uh, to sustain life uh, on the planet uh, and um, ocean benefits for the people and the planet. Also, we focused, we turned our focus to this region of the world where all based uh, around the Mediterranean. Uh, so uh, we had a presentation about the Mediterranean coastal and marine uh, ecosystems. And there was an interactive part, including uh, Padlets and uh, the Slido um, questions. Uh, the course in numbers so far, so this is the first introductory week, uh, we have had uh, so far uh, more than 170 applications from the countries that you can see in the uh, slide, from 46 countries actually so far. Uh, from you, um, more than 60 people have logged in in the platform to follow the content and more than 10 have already uh, posed uh, questions to the experts. So just to see how many of you who are now uh, participating live in this uh, course, uh, in this session, uh, how much you have progressed with the course content. Maybe you can note in the chat um, your level of progress in the e-course from zero, not at all if you haven't uh, logged in yet, uh, to three if you have completed all the videos and tasks of uh, week one. So I see a lot of twos and threes. So we have the committed ones, the ones that uh, uh, are already logging to the platform. Um, before giving the floor to the to welcome the experts of week one, uh, this was one of the first things that you were asked to do uh, when you joined the e-course. So we asked you um, what do you think that ocean literacy is or how you, you define it. Uh, the UN, the United Nations, has, has developed a very elegant, um, let's say, definition of uh, what is ocean literacy. So it's about um, uh, discovering uh, how the ocean, um, how we impact the ocean and how we humans are impacted by the ocean. Uh, it's about this relationship uh, actually, but in your definitions we you gave um, a lot of uh, other interesting keywords that describe ocean literacy. Uh, you mentioned that it is uh, holistic, it, it uh, concerns a holistic understanding uh, of the science of the ocean, but also the culture and um, uh, it's important um, 
uh, it's an important place in our identity. Uh, some of you mentioned that, that it's a finite system, so it's not, uh, you know, um, uh, we need to have um, in mind that it has limits uh, and it is uh, has been uh, degraded, its ecosystems have been degraded. Uh, some of you mentioned the connection to the whole water cycle, so it's not just the ocean, it's a part of uh, something bigger, the, the planetary water cycle. Um, it's important to, to, to talk about uh, the ocean in meaningful ways, someone said, uh, and others stress the emotional connection and empathy um, that we is, is part of uh, ocean literacy. Uh, the balance between ocean use and ocean conversations, so it's a part of sustainable development. And of course, it's, it has to do with uh, responsible and informed decisions that uh, we make as um, consumers and as uh, citizens of today. So I think these are all, all uh, valid keywords describing uh, the concept. And we will hear more about it from our uh, experts. So without further ado, I will um, invite our Professors Kulos from uh, Chair from the Mediterranean Information Office, who is uh, the organizer behind this uh, hybrid uh, universities, together with a series of uh, other institutions, um, to uh, give us our wel the welcome note or remark. Thank you, Yero, and uh, good. Uh... Well, good afternoon for Greece, but uh, from different parts of the world. It is a pleasure having again the opportunity to have uh, yet another university this year. And uh, I'm uh, grateful also to uh, Jonathan Baker, who is with us and uh, the UNESCO Office uh, for um, uh, Science and Culture in Europe, uh, based in uh, Venice, uh, being uh, uh, always our partners for these um, uh, universities. Um, that uh, I'm, I'm delighted that we are again here addressing you and uh, obviously many more that uh, didn't make it uh, perhaps because of the time differences. Um, as uh, um, Iro described already, um, you have already with what uh, um, uh, you presented as uh, your uh, uh, definition or expectations uh, from the course, um, you have uh, actually a good idea about uh, ocean literacy and about what we are going to discuss this week, this week's. Um, I don't know if, um, um, you want us first to welcome and then answer the questions. Um, the only thing I, I want to, to link uh, with the questions uh, and the answers is one question in particular. Uh, uh, do we still need awareness and education or what we are talking is actually uh, the introduction to action. Well, the, the answer is yes, we need, we need information, uh, we need education. We realized through different surveys that our knowledge, the average knowledge about ocean is very limited, very limited indeed. So this is a must, and this is why uh, the UN system and UNESCO in particular, and we as an organization working on education and the environment and the marine environment in particular, uh, want to put a lot of emphasis and encouragement for that. We need knowledge first, and this knowledge together with many other things under the urgent situation we are, of the, because of the climate change, because of the loss of biodiversity, all these are linked with what we are going to discuss with ocean literacy, and they lead to the necessary action. So 
this is just as an introduction and I will come back to uh, try to answer some of your questions in a while. I think Jonathan uh, may follow me. <laughs> Thank you, uh, thank you, Michael. And uh, let me let me start uh, first by by thanking you and and your team for all the hard work uh, that's gone into putting um, uh, the whole summer university summer hybrid university together. Um, and uh, uh, in this case, uh, this year's uh, topic, which is uh, I think an important topic for for both of our organizations, as you as you mentioned. I mean, you're you're part of Mio SCD, of course, but you're also part of UNESCO as well. So you're kind of you're part of the UNESCO family as well, so both of your organizations. But uh, obviously, ocean literacy is a, a, a is a key aspect of the ocean decade, which we're going to speak about, um, uh, I think, throughout the next four weeks. Uh, but it's a really important uh, aspect of uh, uh, of work on the ocean that UNESCO is doing. Uh, it's led by um, uh, at the global level by my colleague Francesca Santoro, who who works uh, in the same office as I do in the regional bureau for for science and culture based in, in Venice. And I know uh, she submitted quite a few videos on, on the subject. I'm not sure whether she's gonna be available today, hopefully in, in, the, next, in the next few weeks. But um, I, I think it's an important topic uh, for, uh, for all of us, for the, for the region as well. I mean, um, the Mediterranean is um, a, you know, a very complex, uh, complex area. It's, it's part of the global ocean. Uh, it has its own uh, realities as well, and a, a lot of a lot of you are are coming from the Mediterranean region. So, um, some of some of these uh, uh, what we're going to be discussing uh, obviously is is important for the for the region, but also applies to to the global level. So, I'm delighted to see that there are also students from all over the world that are that are participating in in this year's uh, uh, hybrid uh, online online version. Um, and I um, uh, I won't speak very 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 longly, but I wanted to bring up one point as well because. Uh, the next four weeks are not only about uh, ocean literacy, as uh, as Michael said. This is, these are the the MAB summer universities, so they're related to the uh, UNESCO sites of biosphere reserves, but also to other UNESCO sites and other designated areas um, uh, throughout the world. So the idea that these sites can be sites to implement ocean literacy, I mean specifically the sites that are uh, obviously located in and around the ocean. Um, is, is an important part of our, our conversations uh, in the next uh, four weeks. And so I look forward to also discussing that, uh, that aspect of, uh, uh, of ocean literacy and, and the use of uh, UNESCO sites to, to implement ocean literacy in the next, in the next four weeks. But I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, just welcome all of you on behalf of UNESCO. Thank you so much for being with us. I look forward to, to our discussions today and in the, next, uh, uh, in the coming weeks. Um, and I pass the floor over to, I guess, Thanos, who's our third uh, uh, expert today. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, Jonathan. And uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Professor Skoulos, for the invitation, and uh, also Mayor Exte for the organization. It is always a pleasure to be here among you and uh, participate in these events, uh, either live or uh, via teleconference as today. So I am Thanos Dairianis. I'm a researcher at uh, the Hellenic Center for Marine Research in Greece. This is the, the main and the biggest uh, foundation uh, carrying out marine research in, uh, in Greece and also in the Mediterranean, one of the biggest. Uh, it covers all aspects of uh, marine research and study from uh, oceanography to marine biology uh, and uh, aquaculture, let's say, to, to, to state a few. But uh, my own uh, field of study are, uh, is marine biology. Of course, marine biology is also a broad field so I concentrate on uh, marine invertebrates, uh, organisms that uh, um, are not fish, marine organisms like uh, sponges, corals, and uh, uh, hydrozoans. And uh, I also investigate uh, Mediterranean ecosystems, uh, especially uh, reefs and caves, uh, which host a great amount of biodiversity. Uh, I am also particularly interested in the interactions between the organisms and the environment and the response to environmental pressures such as climate change or pollution. So I don't want to expand too much, but I would like to, to, to state that uh, it's always a pleasure to be, to be here and uh, in these events because I think uh, the, the Esterusia Hybrid University um, combines a very nice uh, and diverse group of people, and uh, 
it's always interesting that uh, these diverse backgrounds and uh, um, perspectives uh, bring a lot of fresh ideas and uh, 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 topics in the discussion. Thank you very much and uh, nice to see everybody. So thank you, uh, all uh, three of you, uh, uh, experts. And um, I don't know, um, maybe I, I ask uh, Professor Skoulos how you want to uh, move on. Uh, you have all uh, seen the questions, uh, the common. So we have, uh, let's say, a bucket of questions for the whole week. And uh, during the after viewing the videos, you can ask a question, say they're directed to a specific lecturer or more general questions that maybe can be addressed by all uh, three of them. Um, so, uh, Professor, would you like to um, start? Uh... I can uh, start and uh, <clears throat> we can have, uh, I think, uh, an informal discussion. I, I'll try to answer some of the questions and uh, uh, Jonathan and Thanos uh, may uh, actually add uh, or comment uh, as well on the same questions, perhaps. Well, the first thing um, is um, uh, uh, all over, I try to, to answer the first one about the ne necessity of uh, a knowledge of uh, the ocean. Um, it is necessary. Uh, I have a first hand uh, experience uh, being uh, also an oceanographer, chemical oceanographer, um, and uh, the knowledge of uh, the average people, either, even well-educated about ocean is limited. Uh, very few people know, for example, uh, what is the acidity of the ocean, that is uh, alkaline. Um, what does it mean? Uh, how this... Uh, um, influences uh, the move of the distribution of uh, pollutants or of metals, because when we mix uh, fresh water, uh, rain water, or um, river water, both of them are acidic with the ocean, you have chemical reactions, precipitation of oxides, hydroxides, all these kind of things that are very important and you can actually explain in few hours uh, are unknown. And they are so important, particularly the water cycle. And there is a question also here. The water cycle is so important that we all need to understand because it is linked 100% with um, the ocean, with uh, the vegetation, with the biodiversity as a whole, with economy, with the currents of the sea, with the gyres, changing the climate, changing um, so many things in our life that are connected, all connected. So indeed, the need for further knowledge there is, um, has been recognized recently, relatively recently. And uh, the question many of you have is how we can introduce that into education first, our life, and how we can influence other people and uh, stakeholders and uh, also the economic sector on that. Well, um, quite uh, frankly, uh, the, many of these things um, develop automatically. From the moment we discuss something, we know something, we bring something to the attention of school children and students, um, this in one or another way influences also the family and other sectors. But we have many more ways. The way we have to do it is through the curricula, through special uh, chapters in the different uh, lessons, but also through by training the trainers. So whatever they teach, they may link it with experiences from the ocean. Even if uh, 
the, uh, the schools are not in contact with uh, the ocean. Um, they are connected through the water cycle, as I mentioned, through the climate, through tourism, through there are many, many ways in which we all interact with the sea. So my first uh, um, answer to most of the things is teach, teach, teach. Learn, learn, learn more on essential things about the ocean. You have to realize that, and here perhaps Thanos may say a few things later, that I don't know, uh, some people say that we have uh, one million uh, species in the, um, or, uh, in the ocean. I don't know if this is true, but um, only a small percentage of that uh, is known. So still we have uh, next to us the unknown, the unknown part of our uh, planet which is the source of pharmaceuticals, the source of uh, minerals, the source of uh, food, the source of inspiration. Um, the, 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 the area through which we transport almost 90% of our goods. So I stop here and I may come, this is answer to some of the questions already. I, I didn't mention the names, but uh, I'm sure that um, um, Jonathan and uh, Thanos may add things on, on your questions. And I may, if there are things uh, left uh, at the end unanswered, we have uh, another 30 minutes to discuss. I'm happy to to come in uh, briefly to complement uh, what uh, what Michael just said about the the importance of of knowledge about the ocean. Obviously, this is something that the UNESCO feels very very strongly about. This is why there's a whole this whole area of ocean literacy that uh, we're putting so much emphasis on because um, uh, we believe as in I mean it doesn't only apply to the ocean. Of, of course, it applies to other areas related to the environment. But the the, the more knowledge you have uh, about a certain area, the more action you can take as well. The more you can convince. You have to be able to. Um, uh, I mean, people have, you have to be able to learn, you have to be able to, to teach, as Michael said, um, uh, both within the school system and also uh, we're talking about awareness raising. So the understanding of what the ocean means uh, is not only with students, but with decision makers, for, for example, with the political class, you know, we, we have to be able as, as, as experts and as people working in these areas to explain the importance of the ocean uh, to decision makers so that they are able to, to take decision decisions based on that, that information. So there's a continuous process of not only learning about some of the basics that uh, that Michael uh, covered about what the you know the um, uh, about the characteristics of the ocean but uh, what the ocean means in different uh, parts of our lives and why it's important to, to manage the ocean and to under, understand the ocean uh, as well as we can so um, and 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 of course education as as uh, as, you, as you know is one of the priority areas of UNESCO overall uh, so education for sustainable development more broadly, and, and, and Michael and his team work on that quite a bit. Uh, and ocean literacy is related to this. Uh, it's just uh, uh, raising the awareness of the importance of the ocean, of the environment, uh, of climate, um, of water, of all these different areas that are that are key to, to our survival uh, as, a, as a species. Um, and so, yes, education is, is key. It continues to be a key, and, and I'm sure it will uh, at least that's what uh, UNESCO definitely believes will continue to be a key in, in the uh, in the future. And I'll I'll, I'll leave the, the floor to, to Thanos to come in. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Jonathan. Uh, if uh, if I may something if I may add something to these very interesting uh, topics uh, laid out, uh, is that um, I am often surprised uh, by how much uh, even. Let's say let's take for example the the, the 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 Greek people that are people that live for centuries near the sea uh, and near the and they live from the sea. Uh, oftentimes they we use the sea for transportation, we use the sea for food, uh, we use the sea for uh, for recreation, 
uh, I'm oftentimes surprised by how little uh, the broad public uh, usually knows about the sea, uh, about the sea as an ecosystem. And uh, it is, I think it is only recently that the ocean and the sea in general uh, is broadly considered as part of the total biosphere. I mean, in the public perspective. So uh, for me, this is, it is really important to bring the sea uh, in, the, in the broad discussion and to, 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 to raise awareness uh, to, uh, for all the people of the, uh, of the processes that are happening in the ocean. Uh, because, for example, because uh, essentially uh, it, is, uh, it is difficult uh, to, to directly perceive the sea because it is, um, uh, it is excluded from our senses. I mean, for example, if there is a wildfire in a forest, everybody takes notice and our lives are directly affected. But if there is a major catastrophe uh, in the sea, who will take notice immediately? Essentially nobody, maybe some crazy scientists that are documenting the, the, the thing. Uh, but uh, we will notice this, um, this damage indirectly by the reduction to the resources, by the degradation in the water, uh, by other means. But uh, this usually comes later and it does not create a direct connection uh, with, a, with, a, uh, with a cause and the effect. Anyway, I think we will have uh, plenty of time to discuss uh, these, uh, these things uh, um, more elaborately in the discussion. Uh, I come uh, also to specific, uh, some specific questions. But I don't know if Thanos may later on discuss something about, about the mangroves, which is not a, a, a Mediterranean uh, system anyway. However, uh, there is a question there. Um, there, there. There is a question about uh, engineering microbes. Um, I don't know. I mean, there are cra many crazy in inverted commas ideas uh, about how to get rid of plastics. Uh, the plastics uh, uh, in the sea uh, indeed is a big problem. However, uh, we have to be sure that we don't create a bigger problem by uh, introducing uh, uh, bio, uh, biotechnology products, <laughs> uh, for uh, microbes, uh, engineered microbes in the marine environment. Um, we, uh, we do uh, have uh, many proposals on how to deal with it. Uh, on shore uh, and uh, in uh, in uh, land based uh, addressing the land based sources of plastics and we have to give priority to to, to that first uh, and we have also uh, ways in which we can collect or get rid of some of the plastic uh, from the sea uh, but uh, the uh, the engineering engineered the microbes to be used in the plastic soup, uh, I think it is not a solution at the moment. Uh, the, there is a question about uh, uh, how to involve business in ocean literacy. Well, there is business in, uh, in ocean. Um, uh, maritime, I mean, ship, shipping, uh, uh, for years is there, and uh, I can tell you that I have contacted contacts even yesterday with um, major organizations uh, of ship owners and others. They they work now um, a lot and seriously uh, about the uh, their contribution and how they can um, change. Uh, their models, because um, the uh, all the uh, analysis show that uh, the volume of transport will increase enormously. Uh, so they need to be in business in a healthy sea. So there are 
apart from them, we have uh, the aquacultures as a, a, another big industry that also uh, need to have healthy seas uh, for their operations. So I believe that um, uh, soon and through the decade, we'll approach with uh, awareness, uh, with targeted, uh, in, in target groups and with targeted information from different organizations, including uh, MIO and including uh, also the UNESCO chairs, um, the different sectors. This is something that requires further planning, but we, we are towards this direction. Um, this answers also the question about the everyday life. And the other question uh, is, if I understand well, how we can introduce uh, and make uh, um, aware people that live uh, far from the sea. I mentioned also before, we need uh, through a holistic approach to show uh, in the same way we explain the importance of, uh, uh, of rainforests or for the poles, um, we need to discuss uh, in depth also there for the role of um, uh, ocean in keeping the climate, in providing the important the part of the, of the water cycle and all these kind of things. Now, um, benefits for the blue economy. Blue economy, explaining blue economy is part of uh, ocean literacy. Uh, we need to uh, exactly to explain to everybody what blue economy is. And blue economy is not necessarily good. We need to have blue sustainable economy because blue economy is whatever is taking place uh, as uh, through enterprises in the marine environment. We need to have this in sustainable, with sustainable production and consumption. So it is important exactly through uh, ocean literacy to focus on uh, ESD as a whole. Uh, education for sustainable development is the overall, um, let's say, uh, all embracing issue within which the uh, ocean literacy uh, could develop and also provide. Uh, I think there's a problem with your uh, microphone. Uh, we lost you for the, no, you can hear him. Ah, okay, no? so it's our problem. Okay, so. Okay. Um, Sorry. So, uh, no problem. Um, there is a question about uh, the financial scheme for ocean literacy. Well, indeed we need uh, resources. But um, uh, it is not so, I mean, it is important, of course. We need the resources and we need more resources in training the trainers. There is uh, the most important thing. For the rest, um, it is a matter of uh, uh, planning, better planning, introduction of, um, key elements in the curricula, in the, in the books and curricula, and uh, um, uh, empowering educators to, by making them aware and have the knowledge to enrich their teaching and make it more interesting, more attractive for students by using examples from the sea. There are so many possibilities, so many options to enrich a lesson uh, using examples from the sea. So this is one of the important things. Um, I may come back, uh, I, I leave time for, the, for my colleagues because there are other issues raised um, and I may come back if necessary. Yes, thank you, Professor. Um, maybe if I can comment on this, and uh, some of you mentioned the important uh, role of uh, enriching our curricula. 
Um, my personal uh, opinion on this, the, on this is, of course, the curriculums, all curriculums all around the world uh, uh, should be enriched with all the topics of sustainability, uh, climate change, and of course the ocean, but uh, we should not wait for that. So the educational community um, should not wait for these changes to happen, to, to, to change how they work. The, the world is changing. The way we are uh, being educated and we learn things is changing rapidly. So we need to grasp, uh, in my opinion, every opportunity we have, such as trainings like this we have, or, or other forms of uh, non-formal learning, uh, online videos, in order to um, uh, bring these topics inside the classroom, but also uh, outside the classroom in non-formal ways, which uh, so in some cases are the most uh, effective ones, um, the, the ones that are closer to the environment. Um, maybe uh, we address the next question to um, Mr. Baker. There was one uh, uh, comment in the Slido uh, for you uh, asking uh, to, to what extent the experience of implementing the SDGs in biosphere reserves can be somehow um, transported now, transferred in this uh, new decade in the ocean literacy. Yes, thank you. No, that's a that's a very interesting question. Um, as you as you may know, the the UN system and UNESCO in particular see uh, biosphere reserves as well as other uh, sites as sites for the implementation of the SDG, so the 17 Sustainable Development Goals and Agenda 2030. And of course, one of those SDGs is um, is that SDG 14 related to the ocean. So already there, we've been working to implement um, uh, these different SDGs, including SDG 14 in different sites, notably biosphere reserves. Uh, now, the, the idea for uh, to focus this year, um, the summer university and the hybrid university on uh, ocean literacy uh, in biosphere reserves was exactly that, was to try to pinpoint a little bit and, and uh, delve a little bit down, down more on this specific issue because of the decade, because of the importance uh, that the ocean and ocean literacy has for UNESCO, and to sort of bring these two strands of work together, um, and and so that's a we're, we're this this is something that's that's happening um, at the at the global level, but I don't, it's not something that's been uh, on which there's been so much of an emphasis. So uh, we wanted with uh, our colleague uh, Francesca Santoro and with uh, and with my and with you and 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 the team at Mio Ishide to to really pin, focus in on that on that issue and focus in on how. Um, biosphere reserves specifically, um, but also other other UNESCO sites uh, can act as um, uh, as sites for the implementation of SDG 14 uh, and of ocean uh, literacy um, in particular. And so that's uh, we we had a, a side event um, uh, at the Environment for Europe conference in in October uh, related to that topic. Uh, we're also thinking about um, uh, putting together a, a network of uh, biosphere reserves uh, in the Mediterranean that are that can that can act as uh, pilot sites for ocean literacy um, and for implementing uh, ocean literacy. We worked when we were in Cyprus, um, even though it's, they, they they weren't UNESCO sites. But we worked with uh, um, with experts, with um, uh, people that were working in schools in Cyprus to to discuss with them how. Uh, they were approaching uh, ocean literacy uh, in schools in in, uh, in areas and islands. Obviously, Cyprus is an island, but on uh, island and coastal zones. Uh, so I think it's it's um, let's say it's a it's a topic uh, of interest. It hasn't been uh, there hasn't been uh, much uh, that much in depth work specifically on ocean literacy in uh, UNESCO sites, and this is what we're we're trying to initiate. And so this is um, this uh, summer university and hybrid university is part of that uh, process. And it's something that we're going to uh, keep focusing in on uh, in the coming in the coming years. I don't know if uh, Thanos wants to uh, touch upon uh, some of the questions for this on uh, groves or something about uh, uh, further about uh, biodiversity. Um, actually, uh, biosphere reserves uh, uh, have also this function, the function of protection as an important component. Um, in, we know that uh, in the south of Crete, uh, we have already damage of uh, ecosystems and uh, 
of fisheries. We have the alien species, um, Lagocephalos, that has destroyed a, a big part of the, actually, of the fish stocks. Um, on, the, on the other hand, we have deep seas, deep sea there of, um, of international importance, of uh, regional and international importance, and uh, knowledge uh, obviously is necessary to deal with these issues. Mm -hmm. So perhaps you may comment on that and uh, also, uh, I don't know if uh, on the mangroves you want to say something. Yeah, yeah. Of course, uh, uh, what you what you already said, uh, what you just said is uh, very important knowledge. This is something uh, we often uh, lack and it is important to pursue. So good knowledge uh, uh, results to, to, to good management. This is this is very important. Uh, now on the on the on the question about ecosystems, I can see the question is about how can we protect the mangroves from uh, human activities. Uh, well, I'm not uh, an expert on mangroves. This is a tropical ecosystem that uh, is not present in the Mediterranean Sea, but uh, of course I'm familiar with it. And what I could answer on this uh, question is that uh, uh, is what I would uh, what what I would answer. Uh, regarding any sensitive marine ecosystem. And my answer would be that uh, it is important to, uh, to, 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 to have specific uh, rules regarding the, 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 the human actions in the coastal settings. Uh, of course, development is a, is a human need and uh, uh, coastal communities need to, to establish activities. But uh, these activities cannot be unregulated, and these activities cannot uh, take place uh, everywhere. So we can assign specific uh, coastal location uh, for development, for, uh, uh, for urban settlement, for the industry. Uh, but at the same time, we have to uh, keep some uh, coastal uh, um, systems pristine. Uh, or under uh, strict regulation. And uh, this, uh, this assignment has to be quite uh, precise. Uh, there, is a, there is an emerging um, trend uh, in uh, coastal management, uh, the marine uh, coastal uh, planning, uh, which um, allocates different uses and establishes uh, um, sound um, allocation of these activities. And of course, uh, restoration comes into, into the game lately. Uh, we not only need to uh, protect marine ecosystems, uh, but sometimes we are called to restore marine ecosystems. And this is a, a field that is uh, in, in development lately, and, uh, but it, it will play a major role uh, in future uh, marine ecosystems. Thank you. If I may add here, because there is also a question about high seas. Um, the, there is already um, this um, uh, target of 30% uh, of uh, uh, our um, um, territorial and uh, marine environment to be protected. Uh, it sounds very... Um, ambitious at this moment, but uh, it is there. And uh, with the changes we have in uh, specific areas, such as the Arctic, um, the, the changes we see are uh, dramatic. And I think that uh, uh, we have and we will uh, go further in uh, protecting um, large ecosystems, including in non-territorial waters. Um, so these, these are uh, important um, discussions in the, at the moment. And uh, of course, the, the climate change, the losses of biodiversity, and uh, the need 
to move uh, our economy in higher seas um, creates uh, uh, needs for also further protection of, of, of the marine resources. Uh, we have uh, uh, moved fast to exploitation of deep seas for minerals. And this, of course, um, do we say uh, this? Uh, I can hear you, Angela. Uh, and uh, uh, this, of course, um, leads in some cases in over exploitation with important damages. Um, I, let me, yes. Yes, um, I, I would just like to uh, remind everyone that uh, we will uh, talk more about the uh, management uh, issues on uh, week um, three of uh, this course. We will talk about the integrated uh, uh, planning and uh, managing in this holistic way the sites and collecting, connecting the, the marine environment also to terrestrial uh, environment. So all the, these topics are going to be uh, highlighted also there in, in week um, three. Um, maybe um, I have two questions that I think haven't been addressed so far and uh, there is concern uh, the monitoring of the ocean literacy um, initiatives worldwide how is this done in, in what ways and the other concerns the financial schemes uh, that are can we can um, uh, make use of uh, so i would invite any of the three of you to to comment on these two I don't know if, uh, so if uh, Jonathan will say something on the monitoring of these activities, monitoring of, uh, of uh, the educational activities of uh, the literacy. Yeah, I mean, literacy. There, there, I mean there's the two, two, two points I wanted to come in uh, on. Um, uh, the, the last point that uh, Ido mentioned uh, related to, to uh, I guess, the financing of, um, of ocean literacy in the ocean. So there's... Um, you know, obviously, different uh, uh, donors, different sources of funding that exist um, uh, that uh, uh, we can um, uh, go to um, uh, for for projects related to the ocean. For um, uh, there's a series of um, uh, you know you uh, know related funds that are uh, uh, available. The uh, EU uh, uh, has uh, funds that are directly related to the ocean as well. When we're speaking about the European region, and then other regions have similar have similar types of funds. The uh, UNESCO, our office, has has uh, uh, we have uh, worked directly with the EU on ocean literacy. There's some um, uh, funding there, and then of course uh, a key area which we touched upon on, on other questions as well is the private sector and getting the private sector involved. Um, uh, not only um, on funding ocean related uh, projects, uh, but then also being part of, uh, of the solution in many ways, as uh, Michael mentioned the, the whole the, the shipping industry is, is getting involved and we, we interacted with them to a certain extent when we were in Cyprus. Um, and so obviously that, that's a very uh, obvious and kind of direct partner. But uh, and, you know the whole the, the whole private sector in, in general, um, is uh, is obviously an important partner for to get involved and to, to be able to um, to work with uh, when we're speaking about the ocean and and we've done so from the perspective of the regional bureau um, and this is uh, Francesca Santoro is is the one who's been in, in charge of some of these projects but I've also been involved um, for example we're working very closely with uh, with Prada. Cannot hear you. We lost you uh, on uh, ocean related. Uh, sorry, you hear me now? Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. The the wife. Uh, yeah. It says my internet connection is unstable, which is good. It's better that it's the internet connection and not me. Uh, but um, uh, no, as I was saying. So there, there's a, a just. Uh, to, I wanted to to touch upon that to say that there's an interest of the private sector in the ocean and ocean literacy as well. And I think that they're going to be a key uh, key partner 
for for the ocean and uh, in the future. So I wanted to, to to make that point from before and again from what Eero just uh, just brought up. Yes. Also, uh, there are two things I wanted to to add to monitoring. Um, we have uh, also um, the, through the new uh, all the social media, but also the um, the different platforms and the different schemes of um, uh, even the ones we handle as uh, MIO and Medis. Uh, and many others, of course, the UNESCO uh, 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 possibilities and uh, encouragement of uh, the different actors, non-formal and informal educators, uh, to get in, uh, bring uh, to the attention to the entire community uh, their work and uh, uh, interact with others. We have more and more of that. Uh, we try also to create uh, uh, such a scheme in the Mediterranean uh, with, with Francesca, and uh, we hope that uh, it, will, uh, it will work. It is not a, a monitoring per se, but it is something that uh, uh, creates, let's say, uh, a database for many of this, uh, of this uh, uh, material. Um, I, I also wanted to, to come to uh, the funding again. Um, we are talking about, um, uh, when we are talking about um, ocean literacy and blue economy, imagine that a big part of uh, the energy sector is linked with, uh, with the ocean, either uh, through uh, um, the traditional still uh, ways with exploitation of hydrocarbons, we, we don't want that further, but also uh, as a, um, offering an ideal place in many cases for, um, um, uh, for uh, wind power. Uh, there are many, many more activities getting from, uh, from the land to the sea. Uh, and uh, we have, uh, we will have uh, also expansion of uh, urban environments into the sea. We have already expansion of airports into the sea, and so on and so forth. The uh, we understand that um, the 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 opportunities we have in the ocean um, were not tapped; uh, they, they are untapped yet. And um, uh, this is something that we have to keep in mind because we need to avoid mistakes uh, that we have done in the terrestrial environment. Uh, therefore, ocean literacy at all levels is extremely important for the future. And uh, it is an exciting area for young uh, people, for students, because many jobs are going to be also linked with this uh, era. So um, it is important, uh, apart from when we are talking about literacy, to work also with universities, not only from kindergarten to uh, primary schools or even secondary, but also at higher level, because we cannot wait. We need to, uh, to teach we need to make aware the leaders of tomorrow. We cannot wait for the leaders in, in, two, in two decades or three decades. So it is very important this moment for all of you and all of us uh, to see how best uh, we can, you can benefit uh, from, the, from this, uh, from this uh, movement, I should say, from this new awareness and also how we can shape and help uh, others to get into this. Uh, I'm very excited for that. It's a new start. It's a new opportunity that is uh, going beyond uh, the uh, formal education, as all of you said. And in this way, we 
actually interact with, with other partners, with economic partners, with production. And um, it is necessary also to work with uh, local authorities and also uh, the sectors that fill the need of that, which is the, are the sectors of tourism, the sectors of transport, sectors of fisheries, and these are the, 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 main, the main ones. So um, we have uh, to all of us think how best we can interact uh, with these other groups. Uh, to add to the last uh, comment uh, of Professor Skoulos, uh, research and innovative technologies is something that is very much needed in the direction of, uh, and it's underlined, it's in the heart of the UN uh, Ocean Decade, uh, and it was underlined also by you in your, uh, in your uh, comments, and it will be uh, underlined in the videos we've seen and the, the, the ones that will follow. Um, I would like to ask uh, Thanos for any comments based on the discussion we've had so far, but there was a specific question for you on this marine deforestation that was uh, mm -hmm. uh, also interesting, if you can elaborate a little bit more mm -hmm. on that. Yeah, thank you very much, Hiro. I can, I can comment on both, actually. Um, first of all, on the discussion, I mean, this is very interesting for me as, a, okay, of course, social literacy is not my field, uh, but uh, I oftentimes come across, it comes across uh, our activities as scientists. So I will speak from a scientist's perspective. And uh, what I would uh, say is that um, uh, the scientific community is oftentimes a closed community. And also we have to uh, communicate our results, we're not uh, often effective to do so. Uh, so this is a very important uh, channel, let's say, that has to be um, uh, 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 has to be developed uh, to 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 communicate scientific results. But for this uh, for this reason, I think we need professional communicators, people that have the skills to 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 take. The scientific results and uh, translate them into uh, language and um, presentation that is uh, useful and appealing to the broader public. And this is the only way uh, to, to valorize the scientific results and uh, take advantage of the progress that is being made uh, to benefit the broader public and the society in general. So this is, I think this is a, a great challenge and also a great necessity for the future. Uh, also, uh, uh, as, uh, as researchers, we are um, very, um, uh, very appealed lately by the participatory uh, nature of um, communication. I mean, I'm talking about citizen science. Uh, we try to, to incorporate this in, uh, in our project. And uh, citizen science, uh, science in principle is that uh, the, the, the broad public can participate, can take part, and can um, uh, can actually um, um, undertake scientific activities. And I think this participatory approach is one of the best approaches to, to actually engage the public uh, into knowledge and science in uh, general. Anyway, uh, so now on the, on the question, I think it was a specific question on the deforestation. Uh, how, yes, it is about a herbivorous fish. Okay, uh, for those that probably have not seen uh, my presentation, I was talking about the process of deforestation, marine deforestation uh, in, the, in the sea, um, uh, which is essentially that uh, areas that are covered by, by algae, by vegetation, are being depleted uh, by specific organisms that are herbivorous. And these organisms are not um, native ones, but they are non-indigenous, non they're an inv invasive uh, species uh, coming from uh, tropical seas in the Mediterranean. And uh, this has been a major problem, especially in the eastern part of the Mediterranean. So the, um, the herbivorous fish uh, that the herbivorous fish that uh, is believed to, to have um, 
to, to be responsible for this deforestation is a Siganid fish. The common name is rabbit fish. Uh, this is a very interesting story because this fish was introduced uh, in the in the fifties in the Mediterranean. So it's not a newcomer. It is a it is it has been established for many decades, but uh, something changed in the process in the progress. And uh, after the after two thousand ten, uh, it uh, it became more abundant, and uh, it um, uh, and this abundance caused the depletion of uh, marine vegetation. Now, this is not a very easy thing to explain because it's not uh, exactly linear. I mean, there is no a single there is no, not a single fact that caused these uh, change. There are many factors. One is the, the, the sea temperature rise that allowed this fish to, to, uh, to be better fit for, uh, for this new environment and uh, expand its populations to new uh, habitats and in higher numbers. Uh, another thing is that uh, uh, the, the habitats where this fish uh, was established uh, were progressively more and more degraded and degradation uh, causes, um, uh, enhances the capability of these uh, non-indigenous species to uh, actually uh, put pressure on the, on the local environments. So in brief, this is, these are the most um, relevant um, explanations for this uh, phenomenon. The question, Thanos, is uh, are there uh, ways uh, mm. to protect our ecosystems from that? Because this is the same, of course, it's not the same exactly, uh, is with the uh, Lago uh, yeah, yeah. From the moment we have these species, uh, how we can get rid of them? Is, it, is there mm. any uh, natural process you know, for that? It is not we don't uh, know always... if it is, it's not linear, the system. And we yeah, know that yeah. the system may react uh, and uh, the solution will come from nature. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, at the moment, we have a, a serious problem and economic problem and the pressure on fisheries and uh, livelihoods of fishermen, and all these kind of things. How do we react to that? The problem is that it is not always very easy. I mean, uh, it is not always easy to just get rid of them as soon as they have established. Uh, there have been some uh, attempts to targeted action. Uh, there has been some attempts with the lionfish that is also a newcomer, a uh, new invasive species in the Mediterranean. Um, but we don't, we don't uh, yet know if these uh, targeted actions are effective. And we also do not know uh, how these actions will affect uh, other parameters of the ecosystem. For uh, Lagocephalus, uh, for example, which you mentioned, uh, it is not as easy to take targeted actions because Lagocephalus is a very active fish. Uh, it, uh, it lives in habitats that are not uh, very accessible to humans. So, okay, fisheries could be a, a, a way to do it. But uh, Lagocephalus also destroys the nets. Uh, so, and if you if you if you apply excess fisheries, you will also target other species. You cannot target only Lagocephalus. So, this is not a, 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 an easy problem to tackle. Uh, but uh, what we can do, I mean, is to uh, at least to to focus our actions on the protections of ecosystems, because uh, as I said before, the expansion and the and the establishment of this. Uh, non-indigenous species mostly comes from the degradation of the native ecosystems. So if we protect the native ecosystems, at the same time, uh, we prohibit the, 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 the pressure by non-indigenous species. Usually in nature, um, uh, resilience comes from complexity. And uh, the complexity and the, 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 the native um, uh, ecosystem functions is what we need to protect, I think. Thank you, yes, it is. So this is also part of uh, literacy in the same, in the sense that we understand, everybody should understand. And we go back, I mean, how closely all are linked to the biodiversity, the protection of biodiversity. 
uh, protection of biodiversity leads to resilience. Resilience uh, allows for security of uh, ecosystem, security of uh, water, energy, and food. So all these come together, and this is uh, also the ultimum, uh, let's say, lesson uh, that needs to be grasped by everybody at all levels. Um, you were, your last sentence was muted, but uh, no, there are no direct questions. I would just like to comment that um, this last um, uh, story behind the lagocephalus and this fish, you, you see from a specific example that uh, Thanos explained, uh, with, it's fascinating to see how complex the system is, how uh, long term uh, some impacts may be. So you do something today and uh, maybe some impacts because it's so the factors are so uh, complex, uh, the impacts uh, are made evident decades later. Um, so to me, it's fascinating, and I think um, it can um, be used as a, as a mediator between stories like this can be used uh, uh, in order to um, translate, as Thanos said, the, all the important uh, scientific research to uh, stories and narratives that can be relevant to, to, to all of us, uh, to societies. Uh, I would like to mention also that uh, to comment on this uh, communication uh, gap between uh, science and um, our uh, societies that in week four, we will have, a, I think, an insightful presentation on how to bridge uh, this gap, uh, specifically targeted on uh, ocean uh, concepts. Um, uh, and if I may add, you know, uh, it is uh, because um, since today the discussion is uh, very much focused on ocean literacy, I would like to highlight. I would like to highlight that uh, ocean literacy is important also in these uh, terms because to 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 impose protection, uh, you have to you you need to have uh, public support, and you cannot have public support without awareness and without knowledge. So uh, literacy and uh, uh, and um, uh, and engagement of the of the of the public uh, is essential and uh, urgently required. I must say. The only thing I want to say here, uh, Thanos, is that uh, don't trust or trust, but not entirely, um, the uh, communicate the professional communicators. Uh, we need as scientists. We need to develop skills of communication. We need to interpret and explain uh, our results uh, to the wider public. Um, and uh, personally, I have, uh, I have done, I have tried, and I have done that for, for 50 years. And many of my students, excellent researchers, are now also very good communicators. Uh, I think I don't leave it to somebody else because simplification sometimes brings in oversimplification with many mistakes, misunderstandings. And then you have to go out and correct <laughs> actually what you have produced, but it has been communicated <laughs> not in a proper you, yeah, way. Yeah, so. <laughs> you are totally right. And I, I completely agree with you. I mean, uh, uh, I. Uh, I was referring to communicator to I mean to scientific communicators, people that uh, can be scientists but with uh, an expertise on communicating science. And this this is the people uh, we actually need for this task. You are totally right. Thanks. I see a, a hand by Ma Martina. Yes. Uh, hi everyone. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I am Martina from Italy. Uh, yes, I am an, uh, an early career uh, researcher. Uh, I, I'm really happy of this, uh, this meeting uh, because I was born in the first uh, biosphere reserves in Italy, the Circeo Mannen Biosphere Reserve. So I worked a lot uh, on this field in, in the last few years. And uh, what are you saying is, uh, really uh, true 
uh, especially uh, because in the last few months I directly experimented these gaps for, from the uh, communication aspects, especially uh, within the scientific community, because we have a lot of information, but uh, often we are not able to properly share this information. Uh, so I just came back from the uh, first um, ocean training conference in Belgium, for example, uh, uh, in the last few days, uh, we worked on this aspect. Uh, Francesca Santoro was present as well. <laughs> and what we discussed exactly two days ago is uh, exactly this uh, role of uh, journalists, for example, because uh, sometimes they, uh, okay, now the team, the issue of social literacy is uh, very trendy, <laughs> but sometimes they, um, they act in the opposite way than the scientists. So she, for example, experimented uh, the presence of an underwater photographer who said that the climate change is not so uh, bad because now we have also tropical species in Mediterranean. <laughs> but he said that in the first channel of Italian television. So uh, we have a mission on this, uh, on this aspect, I guess. And uh, another thing I'd like to suggest you, uh, since I have also background in geospatial analysis besides the marine science, uh, it, it will be nice to gather all this information through a more uh, well-organized way. For example, through geospatial uh, uh, portal uh, and geodatabase in order to make all the scientists and professionals engaged in this mission on biosphere reserves uh, to gather this information in a more coordinated way. Uh, because there is a lot of work on this uh, field. We are uh, directly engaged, <laughs> but sometimes, uh, uh, except from the digital platform of uh, ResearchGate uh, and the scientific publication, uh, it's not so easy to share and uh, rapidly share this information. For example, the topic of alien species as well is uh, really relevant, but uh, uh, usually, according to the publication uh, procedure, from my point of view, it's useless to communicate the presence of an alien species after two years from our study, because it's uh, monitoring uh, uh, relevant aspects. So we need to um, be more uh, effective also in data management in a proper and fast way, I guess. I don't know if you agree, but this is my personal experience and I'd like to share with you. Thank you very much, Martina. Actually, thank you very much indeed. This, the example you said uh, was discussed uh, in uh, Sarmel Seik in the, in the conference for the climate change, because we had a special session on um, uh, alien species, the change of the temperature and ocean. And indeed, uh, um, the uh, now what we are discussing at this moment is that ocean literacy for even for marine scientists. I mean, the sense, yeah. the sense that uh, there are different um, needs, different needs for different audiences. And even uh, among scientists, there is a, a, a need to uh, somehow change a little bit uh, our mindsets about uh, publication because many of us keep data for years uh, before they publish in order or the referees uh, the, uh, ask for uh, uh, additional information then you delay your publications and Exactly. And this is something, yeah. So we do have this kind of need to inform ourselves also. Uh, I, I'm sure that Thanos also uh, agrees on, on how uh, difficult it is to bring uh, all your findings rapidly 
to the attention of others without losing actually the opportunity to to publish them in a, a good journal um, the careers behind so it's a different thing a different approach when we are talking about building careers or building knowledge for the people <laughs> it is yeah. there are two different uh, two different targets for example there are some uh, extant uh, services also from the european commission you know the uh, eu atlas of the sea or the emos yeah. net portal for example and um, they are uh, extant services they, we paid them <laughs> with our uh, monies from the european commission yeah. And uh, just the implementation of them, for example, is a priority for me because uh, uh, even the research uh, findings uh, must be shared there. Uh, not from my view, but because there is an inspired directive, uh, there is the Open Geospatial Consortium uh, uh, lines. <laughs> so uh, the researchers, okay, uh, our uh, attitude is the citation, the uh, personal uh, uh, um, uh, gratification, but <laughs> the the main aim is the sharing knowledge, and we need to do it uh, as fast as possible. So, thank you very much. You raised something important, which might not uh, be of interest to the non-researchers, but it is also one group, one important group uh, in the in creating knowledge and uh, in the ocean, let's say, community, wider community. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Martina. This has all been, all been uh, very interesting and uh, useful insights. Uh, thanks, everyone. I don't see Jonathan. He just emailed us that he had uh, uh, connection problems and he could not. Ah, here he is. Ah, OK. <laughs> So we don't have um, a lot of time, maybe uh, three minutes. If you have a last round of uh, comments to the participants, so we are 32 people now online. Um, some announcements from my part. Uh, so you keep working uh, on the um, videos and assignments for week one. On Monday, we will open the content of uh, week uh, two, uh, where uh, we will be focusing on uh, ocean challenges and risks um, from we will hear from uh, Francesca, as uh, was mentioned several times, and hopefully we would like to have an uh, IOC expert, uh, Jonathan, I'm looking at you, uh, if we can make uh, their presence in the next uh, Friday's meeting, it would be very valuable for us. Uh, so the floor is to the experts of uh, this session to close the meeting. Perhaps uh, Jonathan will start. Sure, no, it's been a, a thank you. Thank you very much to everyone. It's been a very, very interesting discussion, a very interesting exchange. I'm sorry, I missed uh, five, five minutes or so there towards the end, but uh, I think uh, I was able to uh, to see really the, the interests of the uh, of the students and the good exchange on, on all these different points, which uh, should give us a good basis for uh, the, the online course for the next four weeks. So I'd encourage all of you that, uh, that have haven't done all the reading to go ahead and, and, and do the reading, listen to the videos. Um, and I look forward to, to exchanging with you next week. And, and hopefully, as, as Hiro said, uh, along with some of my, my colleagues from, uh, from IOC. Thanks again to everyone and goodbye. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Thanos, do you want to say something? Yeah, thank, uh, I would like to, to thank you again for this, uh, for this invitation and uh, 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 once more, I had a very nice time being within this group and uh, exchanging all these ideas and uh, thoughts uh, among you. I would be very happy to 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 be uh, in the next one. Thank you so much. Thanks, Thanos. Uh, I would like uh, also to to thank everybody and thank, of course, uh, Iro and uh, Vicky. Uh, and uh, I think that um, uh, three. Um, minor, I mean, three uh, um, things you, 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 you need to take with you is first, uh, yes, it is necessary to work much more um, informing ourselves 
and the others on ocean. The second is in the ocean, uh, we have our hope. Our hope, uh, for, because it's the biggest system, natural system, when we are talking about nature-based solutions, ocean is the first. Ocean is the first that offers these kind of solutions. And third is economy is linked also with the ocean. It's the major area where economy is going to be developed in the coming century, in, in, the, century, in the rest of the century. So um, we need to know better in order to safeguard what is there still, and uh, if possible, restore what is lost. So it is very important that we move in this way uh, and bring as many as possible with us. So uh, thank you all again. Thank you, Irod, back to you. Uh, fantastic. Hello. If you want to switch on your camera so that you can uh, see you, just to say bye bye. And hopefully, we will see all of you uh, next uh, Friday. That's it from us for today. Vicky, maybe you want to say you didn't speak today. Just say. <laughs> I think you covered everything. Uh, Vicky, has please been open, open your cameras. Open your cameras. <laughs> bye bye, everyone. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thanks Thank a lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you next week.